just the power that just surged through the earth. You could feel it wherever you were at. And then uh, there was a lot of fear. People were afraid fear. to go back in their houses, right. uh, not sure what to do. Um, and we'd not experienced anything like that, so it was just kind of eerie. Oh, okay, that's a good word. I like that, eerie. What's up everybody, good morning. It's Earthquake Dude, and we're, we are on our way to the Ridgecrest Earthquake Sequence. So we're gonna see how they look like after three years um, of time has passed. And we have a special guest. How's it going, everyone? So your name and your channel, dude. My name is Cameron. My TikTok is The Quake Hub. You should go follow me if you don't already, dude. If you don't already follow me. But yeah, it's gonna be a great day, gonna get some good footage, um, and hopefully some content that'll go viral because that is much needed right now. And we're hoping for an aftershock, right? Yes, yeah, we want an yes. Aftershock. Just a, just so three. so that, that's the plan for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoy the video, and uh, yeah, let's get it. So when we had arrived to the scarp, we saw so much trash that was just dumped there. And it was just absolutely disgusting. And I just want to drop this PSA and say, let's just do better. Let's keep our earth clean. Absolutely disgusting and despicable. Hey guys, uh, so we just arrived here in, in, on, in Ridgecrest or outside of Ridgecrest where the magnitude 7.1 earthquake ruptured the ground surface. I'm on the famous, uh, I'm on the famous dirt road that had a really nice fault scarf which I'll post a picture of here you can see it and you can see it looks nothing like it um, it's been eroded away many cars have passed uh, what are three words to describe your experiences of these of these earth this uh, rich crest earthquake sequence three words three words uh, well just the power that we felt that day um, and then uh, there, a lot of people were frightened. Um, I, mean, I can't think of another word. <laughs> so, so a powerful... Just the power that just surged through the earth. You could feel it wherever you were at. And then uh, there was a lot of fear. People were afraid fear. to go back in their houses, right. uh, not sure what to do. Um, and we'd not experienced anything like that. So it was just kind of eerie. Oh, okay. That's a good word. I like that, eerie. Um, if you can go back to before the earthquake happened, what would your future self help your or that self do? To... Well, uh, I've lived here most of my life and we've had earthquakes off and on. I think we've just had a few years where we just didn't feel them. And I would have uh, mounted things up against the wall. I would have done all that preparedness beforehand like I have done since. Um, just so things don't fall and people get hurt. Right. Um, 
that's probably the main thing. Uh, I think the most important thing is just try to stay calm during sure. those things. Excellent. During the earthquakes. And uh, last question here for you. What advice would you give uh, to someone who lives here in California uh, that hasn't experienced a large earthquake? Well, I'd say not to be fearful of them. They're, uh, I mean, obviously, if you're in the wrong spot at the wrong time, that can be horrible. But I think for the most part, um, you're going to be okay. Um, so don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Yeah. Be don't prepared, be scared. right? Yeah, yeah. Prepare yourself exactly. for it. Know what to do when it comes, but don't be afraid. Uh, don't live in fear of them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. Thank you very much. Those perfect. are perfect. That's Thank exactly you. It. Oh, wow. Um, what, what steps have you taken for we have preparedness go now? We have uh, museum wax holding everything Oh, that's down. good. Uh, we uh, don't store anything heavy up anymore. We still haven't put all of our pictures up because all the aftershocks, and I got oh, a lot right. of genealogy pictures uh, from my husband's side of the family because they were profound in documenting that kind of thing. Prolific. Yeah. <laughs> Could you describe what's in your go bag now that you've experienced those Medications, several sets of clothes, water, um, snacks that you don't have to cook or put right. in the refrigerator, dog food, dog, food. Gotta dog take medications, care of, what was his name? Remus and Tonks. I have care, Remus and Tonks. Uh, we're Potterheads. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Anyway, so we have dog items, we have things to keep the dogs cool, we have battery, battery chargers okay, and good. batteries. Uh, the chargers are always charged up, we rotate them. Um, we always have potable water in several places. I've got a lot of it in my Tahoe, and uh, I don't care what the heat does to it, it's there. Yeah. <laughs> right. I go for a wheel drive. Better water so. than no water, right? Yeah. yeah, you can live without food for weeks, you yeah. can live without water for days and breath not so much. What would you say to somebody who hasn't experienced a big earthquake yet? Uh, wow. So many of us had PTSD after that. I um, can only imagine, yeah. But there's, like I said, I'm from the south and the earthquakes scare me because there's no warning. Nope. Yes. I mean, hurricanes, weeks of warning. Right, right. Tornadoes, minutes of warning. You know, uh, but you can drive away. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so you can't drive away so from an earthquake. Do it, no. um, gosh, I would. You know, it, when people come to town, when I have friends that move into town, I, the first thing I tell them is batten everything down. I mean, if you're going to hang pictures, put something that they won't move. Excellent. If you're going to put any kind of thing on a shelf or a bookcase. I mean, my husband put lips on all of our bookcases so the books wouldn't fall out. Uh, or I have a cart 